Hello guys, I'm Frankie, and you might remember my tutorial from a little while back called How to Make an Active Ragdoll in Unreal. Now since then, um, you might notice my voice has gotten a lot deeper, and also I've learned a lot of things. And there's also a lot of new tools that can help us out, and the overall workflow has kind of just changed a bit. So, this is going to be a tutorial, an updated version, of how to use the Mixamo character like animations and and kind of skipping the retargeting step this time. So, first thing you want to do is go to the description and click on this link. Now, we're going to go to the Mixamo converter, because that's what we want. And these guys make an awesome piece of software that converts Mixamo animations straight to the Unreal Skeleton, which is what we want. Because the, the retargeting process is kind of a pain. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is just copy this unzip password and then hit download. Now we're going to want to head back to our folder where we want to save it and save it there. Now while that's downloading, let's pull up Unreal and we're going to make a third person thing. I'm going to call it Ragdoll or whatever you want to call it. That's up to you. Okay, so here's our Unreal project. Now, have this open and we're going to go back now to our Mixamo converter that we just downloaded. Pull this up. Here it is, um, you might, you can just extract this with the Windows extractor if you only have that, but uh, if I've got 7-zip so I'm just going to extract it here. Now remember what we did, we copied the password, Terribilis, um, cool. Now there's an important step here, um, this a little FBX file in the directory, um, you're going to need to upload this into Mixmo, so hit upload character. Bring this here, chuck it in there. Now you're going to see it's going to upload. This won't take very long. All right now, once that's done, you should see that in a second here, it's going to automatically rig the character, and there he is. There's our uniform mannequin, very recognizable. Now, let's get our animation. So, the first one we're going to need is floating. Okay, now what I like to do is add a lot of movement range to it and just double the overdrive so it looks like he's flailing about. Now download that without the skin. Doesn't matter if you have keyframe reduction on or not, but depends if you want to save some room. Now you want to go into your tutorial folder, uh, sorry, into your Mixmo converter folder, go into the initial folder and save the floating animation in there. Now you want to also get to what, just type in pain and get the writhing in pain animation okay and if you want there's one adjustment you can make called the character arm space now if you increase this he'll move his arms a lot more and I think it looks better now yeah these settings don't really matter but if you want keyframe reduction on you can it doesn't really change much apart from the file sizes now okay now we've got our two animations launch this up and go into your Mixmo converter, like a little thing here, it's in the immediate directory. So you go into Mixmo converter and it's there, it's a little frog red thing. Now, only tick box you need is delete initial animations after conversion. And now, as you can see, pop-up comes up saying, all good, and now we're done. So you can go into your complete section and you can see, there are our files. So, we can... Uh, drag these into Unreal. We might want to organize this slightly, so I'm going to go into my mannequin folder, my animations folder, and I'm going to import them into there. Now, the main thing is that your skeleton needs to be set to the UE4 mannequin skeleton. Now, if you drop this arrow down here, um, there's a few settings that the uh, people who made this, they recommend. So, uh, here they are. I'll let you know what they are now as we go through. So, first things first, make sure input uh, this little top checkbox, import meshes, bone, yada yada, ticked. Use default sample rate, make sure that's ticked. Uh, import bone tracks, make sure that's ticked. Uh, import uh, custom attributes, make sure that is ticked. Down here, do not import curves, make sure that's unticked. And delete existing morph targets, make sure that is unticked. Now, uh, now you can import this import all. Make sure you click import all. An important step. Alright, 
And if you click on your animation, you'll immediately see that it is in the Unreal Skeleton. And if you have a cool character from the marketplace that you want to put in, that'll now work all good. Now, we're going to work on the coding side of things for a little bit here. There's not too much of it. It's very simple. This is a slightly intermediate tutorial, so you need to have to be slightly familiar where you know with referencing components and all that kind of thing now this is very standard I'm just gonna delete the touch input don't think I'm gonna need that and delete the VR thing cool um, now the first thing you're gonna want to do is just set up a basic ragdoll so let's just keep it simple here generally you want to use um, project settings and then input to create inputs but for this tutorial I'm just gonna use the F keyboard input so this will just be when I press F. Now we're going to drag out our mesh, and we're going to set simulate physics to true. And now, if we click F in the game, you'll notice something's wrong. He'll ragdoll very oddly. It looks like he none of his limbs were moving. Now this is because our collision preset is set up incorrectly. So if you come here to collision preset on your mesh, you scroll down to collision section. Uh, for, it says character mesh. You want to change that to be ragdoll. Um, now, if you have traces running that are hitting your character, like uh, your capsule as a hitbox, this will turn on camera response. Which, um, if you don't want your character mesh to respond to traces, you may want to turn off. Personally, I'm going to do that. Now, you'll see that we can still run around while we're ragdolling, and it looks kind of funny. So. Let's fix that up. Now, we're going to use a simple boolean, so add a new variable, and we're going to call it ragdoll. Now, we're going to set this to true when we go ragdoll. And now, we're going to make it to, in this tutorial, like kind of leveling up a bit, we're going to make a simple unragdoll function. So if we click, if we come out from pressed here, and we, we type out a branch here, we get an if statement, we get our ragdoll boolean, and we do not. So now, if we're not a ragdoll and we press F, we go to a ragdoll. But if we are a ragdoll, we're going to copy and paste these, and we're going to just untick each. So now it's opposite. And now this won't work straight away, because what you'll notice is that my character's going to fly off, I'm going to be in a different place, and then he's just going to stand there. Now that's because we get de detached from our capsule component when we ragdoll. Um, and we'll fix that in a bit. But the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure our capsule component is following our ragdoll. So that our camera will follow our ragdoll. Now, let's get an event tick here. Um, and we're going to type out a branch. So we're going to get an if statement. Now, if we are ragdolling, there's probably a more efficient way to go about this. But for me, this is going to work quite well. We're going to get a reference to our capsule component. And we're going to set its world location. Okay. And we're going to get our mesh. We're going to drag out a reference to our mesh. We're going to get our socket location. Right. And the socket we're going to get is our pelvis. The pelvis of the character. Okay. Now just connect those nodes. And immediately you'll notice that our camera is now following our ragdoll. Now obviously our unragdoll still doesn't work. But let's solve that now. One thing you might want to do for aesthetics is come into your camera boom and turn on some camera lag. And you might want to set this a bit higher, like 35, but I just genuinely uh, think that smooths out the transition a little. So yeah, now let's fix our uh, immediate issue, which is that our uh, unrag doll doesn't really work. So we first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reference to our mesh, because we need to reattach this to us to our capsule. So we're going to do attach component to component. Now, what we're going to, what our component we're going to be attaching is our mesh, which is already referenced to our capsule. So drag the capsule out and plug it into the parent. And you want to do snap to target. Now, if we do this now, our character is going to be at a wrong orientation because, as you can see, they've got some values set up here. So let's set those values. So we're going to set our relative uh, transform on our mesh. Uh, set relative transform there it is and we're gonna be we're gonna right click and split this and the, we're gonna click on our mesh and we're gonna say okay so it's negative 95 we're gonna type that in the location and 270 on the rotation okay cool 
Now, when we ragdoll, you'll see we go, ooh, we're flying. And then when we unragdoll, we pop back up. Now, you can smooth this transition out. Um, that might be a second video. If, if this video gets a bit of attention on it, you never know. I'll do a transition, a get up transition. But for now, this is uh, what, we're, what we've got. A very basic ragdoll setup. So, let's set up what you came here for. So, let's go to our mannequin, our character, our mesh, and we're gonna grab the physics asset here. So as you can see, pretty standard issue. Now, we're gonna select all of our bones with Control A, and you might not have this profile tab. If you do not have this profile tab, go to Window and tick Profile. Now click on Profile, and you'll see physics animation profiles. Now, if you click new, and we're gonna name this profile Active Ragdoll, um, and you click assign, and you might just wanna copy this because we're gonna be using that in a little. Now, here's our settings. So, this will be in your details panel. You might be in here, but you just gotta click on details. Now, in our orientation strength, we're gonna never change that because that, you might have noticed in the last video, if you have this ticked, he'll snap sideways and it looks really odd so keep that as zero now the optimal values i found which are quite simple is just 500 for all of these three underneath orientation strength and you'll see it stays a little bit steady now you could even get your floating animation and as you can see you can see how that's going to turn out he's ragdolling around so make sure you copy this active ragdoll thing and now let's set it up so first thing you want to do is click the big and you go into your third person character, click this big green add component button and type in physics physics animation. Cool. Compile that. Now we're gonna make a little function here. We're just gonna call it init physics physics animation. And that's just tidy, keep this tidy. Now we're gonna drag out our physics animation component and we're gonna do set skeletal mesh component. Plug that in get your mesh and that's our skeletal mesh component that we're going to want to have the physics animation play on now you're going to want to do apply physics animation profile below now the profile uh, so the body name will be pelvis again and the profile name will be what we copied from here active ragdoll cool now make sure you don't forget this step because you want to drag out your big or you want to get your begin play node okay and connect those nodes up by the way, I'm, when I'm straightening out nodes, I'm drag, I'm selecting the ones I want to straighten out and I'm pressing Q. So that's just a little handy tip for you. Now, now this should in theory work. Let's just hope. Oh. Yep, and as you can see, he's doing the default mannequin animation. So he's doing the jumping animation now. He's running on the floor. He looks like, a, like he's having a bit of a tantrum. So, now we can work on our the fun part, which is the animation side of things. So, go to your mannequin folder, go to your animations folder, and navigate to your anim BP, and go to your event graph, and we're going to need to get a reference to our player character. So we're going to do an event begin play, and we're going to copy this try get pawn owner node and paste it up here. And you're going to want to cast to the third, sorry, not that, cast to third person character, cool uh, and now you're going to right click on this and promote it to a variable and just call it player reference cool so now you've got a reference to your player you don't have to call the event you don't have to cast to him on the event tick which is generally not too efficient um, so we're going to come down to after we're getting the speed and we're going to drag in our player reference and we're going to get ragdoll and then we're going to set our own ragdoll variable. So right click and promote it to a variable. Set this up. And you might want to comment this as like set ragdoll variable. So it's up to you. Um, now, go to your anim graph and you'll see your default state machine. So coming out of that is your running animation, your idle animation. All of those states are coming out of just this state machine here. Now, we're going to do a blend poses by bull. Now, you can only assume what our boolean is going to be. That's right, it's going to be the ragdoll. 
So when we're ragdolling, we make we make we want to uh, set this to false. So when we're not ragdolling, we're doing our default state. And now we're going to create a new state machine. Oops, sorry, state machine. Uh, can't type. Add a new state machine. We're going to call this the ragdoll state machine. All right, connect that to the true pose. Now go into your state machine. And we're going to add a new state. And this is just going to be called ragdolling. Oh, I don't even know. That's, I think that's a word. But, you know, we're going to use it. Now go into this state. And we're going to do a blend per... Oh, so not blend per bone. A ball. Blend poses by ball. And um, condition is going to be... You want to get your speed. Right? And if you don't have this variable on your anim BP because it's a custom one, you just want to get your velocity. Uh, also, you want to get try get pawn owner. You want to get the velocity, and then you want to get the length of the vector. That's how you do that, okay? Uh, but we have this on hand, and we're going to make sure it's less than 25. So if our speed of our character is less than 25, we are going to do the writhing in pain animation. But if it's not, so we're moving quite quickly, floating. Oh, not, yeah, floating, that's right, yeah. Cool. Now, before we continue, one last step. Go to your third-person character. Go to your event graph. And we don't want to be able to move while we're ragdoll. So in our move input graph, you're going to drag out two branches in between your add movement thing. So you might want to drag these back a bit, make a bit of space. Add two, two branches. And the condition, you're going to start with a not boolean. Drag that. Get out of there. And not boolean. Connect that to both of them. And set a ragdoll thing in here. So now we can't move while we're ragdolling. Cool. And here's the final result. As you can see, he flails about. He hits the ground. And oh, he looks a bit out there. You know? So then he'll start to slow down his movements. Now, you can fine tune all the values. Um, you might want a more... Oh, we got an error. Oh, it's just this so yeah good practice is to right click on your player reference and convert to a validated get just make sure that uh we actually have a reference to the player before we try to access a variable from it now um yeah you might want to play with your settings and how you do that is you go into your, your physics asset which i showed you was in mannequin um character mesh physics asset and you might just want to change these values to be higher or lower so you know, a thousand of each, on each of these makes uh, the character quite stiff and rigid, which you might like this effect. It's personal preference. Um, one actually very good thing I just remembered is in your anim BP, in your ragdolling state, which you can locate in your anim graph, your ragdoll state machine, and your ragdolling state, is the the blend time on here, you might want to up that to something like half a second on both of these, because that'll smooth out the transition a lot between when he hits the ground and he goes into his writhing state. Um, but as you can see, this produces quite a good effect. Maybe not on, in my opinion, on a thousand. I prefer a lot on 500. You still got a little bit of ragdoll. A um, hundred is like barely notice the animation, only really when you're flailing in midair. Um, he doesn't really have the subtle movements, but um, I think this effect is really quite cool and it's a lot quicker than it used to be like if you wanted to add some some different animations from Mixamo for when you're on the ground like I know Okay, well, we just got booted. Um, I know that there's a like seizure animation Yeah, yeah laying seizure you might want this one, you know if you have an FPS game where you like Insurgency Sandstorm, where you want the characters to be, you know, having these cool movements after they die. Um, this is a really cool thing, like, you can imagine, uh, you know, get character gets blown up. It's kind of cool effect, and it's really easy to set up. And if you have a basic knowledge of Anim BPs, you can probably do a lot more than just this. And, uh... Yeah, I'll, if this video gets some traction, I'll do a uh, blending a, for get-up animation. Because uh, I've done that in the past, but I haven't done a tutorial on it. So, uh, yeah, make sure you comment if you want to see that. Now, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.